I'm Sarah. And I'm Louise. And we're nutrition scientists from the British Nutrition Foundation, a leading nutrition charity. In this video, we're going to talk about how healthy eating is more than just about what we eat. It's also about the how, when and why of eating. But that's not the whole story. What may be less well known is eating well is also about how we eat. But what do we mean by how we eat? How and in fact why we eat can include the time of day we eat, our eating speed, how often we eat, the food environment we eat in, our emotional state or how tired we are when we eat, and the portion sizes we are eating. All of these factors are thought to influence what we eat and our relationship with food and may have an impact on our health. Our eating habits and patterns have changed over the years as our lifestyles have become busier and more demanding, so thinking about how we eat may be more important than ever. One way to think more about how we eat is to consider the concept of eating more mindfully. Did you know that eating mindfully is now being included in some countries' dietary guidelines, like Germany and Canada? In Canada's food guide, being mindful of eating habits while taking time to eat, noticing when we are hungry and when we are full, and enjoying the taste of our food are part of the recommendations to develop healthy eating habits. Mindful eating is an approach to food that focuses on being fully present while eating. Eating more mindfully means being more aware of our thoughts, emotions, senses like taste and smell, and behaviours while choosing and eating food. It is a non-judgmental approach that for some people creates time and opportunity to enjoy food more, and it can help some people develop a healthier relationship with food as it doesn't focus on restricting foods and allows us to appreciate all foods without guilt. Let's look at mindful eating in a bit more detail. Eating mindfully can encourage us to be aware of and recognise feelings of hunger and fullness, and this may help to guide our eating decisions at meal times and when snacking. Perhaps we think recognising when we're hungry or full might sound obvious, but emotional or external reasons other than physical hunger can make us want to eat. These could be factors like boredom, stress, feeling tired, or simply because food's there, readily available and accessible in our eating environment, and looks good. But what cues could lead us to eating when we're not physically hungry? Well, these cues could include things like having a bowl of crisps or a plate of biscuits at arm's reach, or internal feelings like low mood, which could trigger cravings for foods that bring us comfort. And mindful eating, for some people, can help them be more aware and manage these cues. Mindful eating can be a strategy to help in managing food intake and enjoyment of the eating experience. It may help with binge eating or eating for emotional reasons, but it may not be right for everybody. A key element connected to the concept of mindful eating is eating without distractions. Many of us in our busy lives can be described as eating mindlessly, for example, eating quickly or doing other things while we're eating, like watching TV, being on our phones, or working at our computers. So why might eating whilst doing other things be a problem? When we're distracted, we can lose track of how much we're eating or eat larger portions than we need. And we are less likely to notice the feeling of fullness or simply just when we've had enough. Avoiding distractions while eating and concentrating on the food itself can make us less likely to overeat. Eating quickly has been shown to increase energy intake and encourage weight gain. So mindful eating and pausing between mouthfuls to chew and being more aware of the taste of the food may help us to slow our eating rate down, which is why it is sometimes recommended for those trying to lose weight. Eating more slowly can give us time to realise we're full. It takes about 20 minutes after eating a meal for our brain to register we're full. Eating mindfully can be a way to savour our food while being aware of our body's internal hunger and satiety signals. By fully engaging with our food and the effect it has on the body, Mindful eating, for some people, can encourage better eating habits and healthier food choices. Eating with others can also be a part of healthy eating. Enjoying eating with family, friends, co-workers or neighbours is a great way to connect and relax. Regular family meals could also help children and young people have a healthier diet, enjoy food more and may lead to less fussy or emotional eating. Children are likely to look to their parents or caregivers as role models for what and how they should be eating. 
meal and snack times can be a valuable opportunity to create a good eating environment and share positive conversations about the foods we eat and about healthy eating. Nutrition research often looks at the impact of what we eat on our health, but researchers are also interested in exploring the impact and the effects of when we eat on our bodies, for example, our weight. This research suggests that inconsistent or irregular eating patterns, working night shifts and jet lag can all disturb our internal clocks, which in turn disturbs our appetites and digestion. When we eat irregularly or skip meals, we tend to make poorer food choices because we're so hungry, we opt for less healthy food choices or larger portions. So does when we eat matter? That's an interesting question. And to answer it, we need to look at chrononutrition. Chrono what? Chrononutrition. It's an exciting area of research that aims to improve our understanding of how when we eat might influence our health. Chrononutrition looks at the time of eating, for example, breakfast or eating late at night, and the frequency and regularity of eating. Like many processes in our body, our 24-hour internal rhythm regulates our digestion, metabolism and appetite. This rhythm influences how the body may handle food at different times of the day. And it's interesting because the time of day we consume most of our energy may influence our weight and our health. So are there any benefits of getting most of our calories early on in the day? Many of us recognise the expression, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. Some studies have found that people who eat most of their calories at breakfast time may have a lower risk of weight gain and better risk factors for heart disease and type 2 diabetes, like blood pressure and blood glucose levels. There is also some evidence that eating larger meals later in the day is associated with poorer health outcomes and an increased risk of obesity. But the evidence is still inconclusive and we need larger and better studies to make any firm recommendations. But it is worth thinking about the link between when you eat influencing what you choose to eat. For example, for some people, skipping breakfast may lead to them eating foods that are higher in saturated fat, sugar and salt later in the morning. So it is when we eat as important as what we eat. Only time and further research will tell. At the moment, there is no conclusive evidence that points to the best time of day to eat. But regular eating and routine may be useful to keep our body clock aligned. What about intermittent fasting? I heard it may be good for weight loss. Some types of fasting diets for managing weight have grown in popularity. These diets come in a few flavours like the 5-2 diet, alternate day fasting and time restricted eating where someone eats only within a smaller window of the day like an 8-12 to hour stretch and fast for the rest of the time. Okay, so what does the science say? Well, some studies have shown that these types of eating patterns can help some people lose weight, as well as also improving other health indicators like blood cholesterol and blood pressure. But it may well be that this is because fasting helps us to eat fewer calories. To lose weight, on average, we must eat, take in fewer calories than we use. And for some people, these types of eating patterns may be an easier and a more pal palatable way to do that than other dietary approaches. And it's also important to understand that many of these studies are short. We need longer term trials to see if people can keep up this behaviour and maintain any short term benefits. Remember, there are several ways to lose weight in the short term. The challenge is whether these benefits can be sustained. So intermittent fasting is not a magic solution to losing weight. It may not be any better than similar diets where we have to restrict our calorie intake all day, every day. The success of intermittent fasting is down to what works for you. While it may work for some people, for others, it might not fit with their lifestyles or they may find it too difficult to stick to for a long time. What about snacking? A big change in how we eat has been a move from three main meals to more regular snacking or grazing. But is this a good thing? The effects of regular snacking have been widely debated. Research investigating whether eating several smaller meals throughout the day or less frequent larger meals is better is ongoing. Some studies have shown eating small, more frequent meals to have better health outcomes. But other studies suggest that frequent snacking may make us gain weight. And so, although it's been a topic of scientific interest, there are currently no dietary recommendations for the best eating frequency or number of snacks for health. Again, it's probably quite personal as to what works for you. But as many of us include some snacks over the day, it is sensible to make smarter snacking choices. This includes thinking about what we're choosing and how much of them we eat. 
Healthy snacks can supply energy for our activities throughout the day and valuable nutrients such as vitamins, minerals, proteins and fibre. They may also stop us from overeating at the next meal by preventing us from becoming too hungry. We know that many people enjoy some snack foods or treats that can be high in fat, sugar and salt. We can include these as part of a balanced diet and active lifestyle, but consider portion size as well as try to have these foods more occasionally. Buying smaller packs may be helpful, like a small bag of crisps or a fun-sized chocolate bar. Portioning out small portions may also help. Some people may find it helpful to think about the calorie content of these foods when making choices, looking for snacks that are around 100 to 150 calories rather than higher, or following portion guidance on pack. It can also be useful for some to keep foods high in fat, sugar and salt out of sight, for example in the kitchen cupboard rather than in easy view to tempt you. And as we said earlier, being more mindful about these types of snacks can be useful. Including foods you love is part of the enjoyment of food, but aim for moderation and balance. As well as diet, a healthy lifestyle includes other things like getting enough good quality sleep and being active, which could have an impact on how we eat. So what have we learnt? Like any relationship, building a good relationship with food requires work to maintain it. A healthy relationship with food allows us to feel relaxed around food occasions. It relieves us of pressures to eat perfectly and not feel guilt and shame about what we are eating. The end goal is to eat foods that are more nutritious and include other foods in moderation. It's not about feeling restricted or cutting out food groups. It's about being able to enjoy what we eat knowing we're making good choices.